Hello everybody, this is Mithril Zenith, and today I have beef with the Fire Emblem community, specifically with average stats and the way that they are used. I think average stats are useful before anyone, you know, yells at me for the probably inflammatory thumbnail that I put on this. Average stats are useful, average stats have their place in discussion, but average stats are not the way the game happens, they're not the way the game is played, and today I want to talk about that and to talk about the design side, maybe the way to think about random growths from a design side point of view, from an experiential point of view, and then from a mathematical point of view. Maybe all three together, we'll, we'll see as, as time goes on. So what do I mean? In Fire Emblem, in most games, uh, you have a random chance for every stat to increase is known as growth rates. As you can see over here, I have the growth rates for Sacred Stones characters pulled up. Ross, for instance, he's going to be a uh, subject of much of this discussion, has 70% HP, 50% strength, 35 skill, 30 speed, 40 luck, 25 defense, 20 resistance. So every single level up, he has these chances for stats to increase. And so what people have done is they have taken those as a decimal point and said, hey, average expected. Just add 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.35, 0 0.35, 0 0.35. And they've done this and have said, hey, look, here's how average, if we're going by linear averages, your Ross will look at level 10. Level 10, uh, trainee. Uh, journeyman, I guess. Anyone who's played Fire Emblem can tell you this is not how math works, this is not how units work. And yet we hold to this idea of average stats as gospel because we don't have another way to uh, describe what has happening to our units. Or do we? This is the binomial distribution for a Ross's speed growth. As you can see, uh, from level 1 to level 10 trainee, binomial distribution is the uh, odds of any one increase happening over the course of multiple... That's a horrible way to describe it. Binomial distribution. Uh, take one number, it either happens or it doesn't, and then you follow that over the course of a series of trials and see how many times it happens. For instance, we have a probability of 0.3. This is a 30% growth uh, for Ross's speed. So he has a 30% chance to raise speed over 9 levels. We're just saying 9 because that's 1 to 10 journeyman. And then if we wanted the specific amount of times, like, okay, how likely are we to get 3, exactly 3 speed levels? Well, we are, you know, 26.683% uh, likely, or 0.26683. How likely are, to, are we to get at least three speed levels? Well, more than half, three or more, 53%. Uh, three or less, 72%. So yes, we are far more likely to get less speed than more. But the thing about Ross and the thing about units like Ross is that he doesn't just follow these linearly, he has a lot of levels to grow. If we're assuming a 10-20-20 Berserker Ross, and he has a cap speed of 28, traditional math says he will have 19.1, that also is including a one point increase here and a one point increase here from promotion. Gaining plus one speed to pirate and another plus one to berserker. So let's uh, knock that around, shall we? We have, let's see, 19 plus 19 plus nine is 27, uh, 40, no, 47? 20 plus 20 plus 7. Yeah, 47. 47 levels to grow. 
That's looking like a, like a distribution. What are the odds that we hit, then? Exact average stats, which are... Let's see, 19.1, so let's round down, say 19. 19 speed, starting from 3, plus, plus 1 and plus 1, so starting from 5, so 14. Exact odds that we hit X 14 times. 0.126%. Yes, it is the highest number in the graph. It is also only a 12, little, little more than 12.5% chance to get a, quote, perfectly average Ross in terms of speed. I'm bringing up Ross because he has so many levels that this distribution curve is so wide, and it also lies to you. Uh, why do I say lies? Well, because distribution isn't everything. We don't just give... Levels don't happen out of nowhere. Sometimes the order in which you get those level ups matters a lot. For instance, I have... I might pull it up in post. I have a Ross in a draft run who I got to level 20 pirate... You know, 10 into 20, and I think, I think I promoted him at level 20 pirate into berserker. And he had, like, 13 or 14 speed, something like that. Uh, what that doesn't tell you is that he had 4 speed as a level 10 journeyman. And then he got up to 12 speed as a pirate. So he was very under, and then he moved to being slightly over, over the course of the game. What that means is that he was getting doubled for a very long time, before he stopped getting doubled, and then he started doubling. And this is not necessarily going to be the case for every Ross. Some Rosses start out good and end bad, some start good and keep good, some start bad and stay bad. And how much dedication you give to a unit will give you that information of like, okay, how, you know, am I going to get out what I put in? Maybe, maybe not. It depends. Is Ross more likely to give you what you put out than what you put in? Again, I don't actually know that. I don't have those those numbers because, as you can see, it's a lot. So a slightly more useful thing is like, okay, what are the odds to have a slightly above or slightly below average Ross? So you might think, okay, well, slightly below average Ross, so something at the very end, 55.889% seems pretty likely. But have a Ross that's slightly above average, 56.744%. So even slightly, like both sides of this, because we're including the middle, are more likely than not to happen. So if someone's trying to throw numbers at you and say, oh, this is exactly how these units are going to happen, that's not really how they work. And let's go to a different unit. Let's go to something like Franz. Franz has been receiving a lot of flack as of late. Somewhat well-deserved, some might say. Because he doesn't start good, and he relies on his overall fairly good growth rates to become good. But that means he needs experience, and he needs to be fed kills. And if his growths don't pay off quickly, he is going to be a very slow unit to build and progress with. So, for instance, you have 50% speed growth, 40% skill growth, 40% strength growth, 80% HP, 25% defense. It's possible that you have a level 10 Franz that still only has like 8 speed. What are the odds of that happening? Not very high, but we can calculate it. So, let's see, 9 levels up at a 0.5, and you say less than or equal to 1 growth. You know, like 2%. Like 2% chance, roughly, that a Franz has only gained at most one point of speed by level 10. But it happens! I've seen it before! <laughs> you know? And, and so this is one of those things of like, no Fire Emblem unit is a sure thing. Their bases are a sure thing and their growths are not, no matter how good the growth is. But what I'm here to say is not necessarily to say, hey, don't use average stats at all, they're not useful. They're useful in terms of discussion, but they're not useful in terms of dictation. 
you can't say this unit will always be bad because their stats on average are bad. Because their most likely stat distribution is bad. But on the same hand, you can't say that they're good because their most likely stat distribution is good. Because that also ignores the context of what does it take to get them there? How slowly or quickly do they level? What's their matchups against the units in their join chapter versus uh, units that progress over time? And these are things that can't necessarily be expressed or explained just in terms of stats. So do we throw out stats? No. But what I'm going to say is that units that have a lot of levels to grow, air quotes growth units, unless you're playing a game with a true fixed mode like Engage on Maddening, I liken them more to the lottery. Because you can have, like, they're going to take some input to get going, but you can have a lottery unit that gets going quickly and steamrolls through everything. You can have a lottery unit that you pour so much effort into it's not even funny and they never go anywhere. I have seen images and if, you know, I, I might ask and they'll, I, I can ask if they can let me show them in this thing, but people have talked in my Discord images of Kyle, like two different Kyles, I think it was Kyle. One has amazing godlike stats and one has like, it's almost as if he never got a single level up. And both of these Kyles can exist. You can't take the average of these Kyles and say this is the true Kyle. You can say this is what happens when a game has random growths in it. Like, you can have the extreme side over here. You can also have the extreme side over here. You can have a unit that has above average. You can have a unit that has below average. And, you know, we're Fire Emblem players. We deal with statistics all the time. This is a pretty widespread, so if we were to say something, ah, I hate that I can't quite do this, but like what's a standard deviation for this binomial distribution? I'd say 12? But then I wish that this site would allow me to cut it off. The the band... Oh yeah, no, that, that's pittance. So 90% of things 90% of a unit with a 50-50 level up will fall between 7 and 12 level ups over the course of 19 levels. 7 to 12. That is a 6 point difference. <laughs> but that is 90% of your units will have that spread. 90% of... No, 90% of units that grow 19 levels with a 50% growth will have a six-point spread between them of how many growths they actually get. And if you make that number more extreme, depending on in what way, that can get wider. Sometimes it just gets shifted down, but yeah. It gets a little steeper, actually, for a smaller number. Yeah. Anyway, I hope that this made some level of sense. Growth units, low-level growth units are not necessary, are not guaranteed investments, but they're not horrible investments either. They're the lottery. So go out in there and play the Fire Emblem lottery and tell me what the best and worst units you've ever seen are. Uh, bonus points if you come into the Discord and share screenshots if you have them. I would love to hear your random unit growth stories, but until next time, hope you uh, found this video fascinating of just, hey, let's talk about units in a different way rather than using average stats. I think average stats has generally fallen off, fallen out of favor somewhat, but I still see it bounced around a lot as like, oh, Ross is always so slow, and it's like, he's more often slow than not, but I happen to have gotten very lucky Rosses. It's like, oh, Ike is terrible, his stats are garbage. It's like, well, Sometimes the stats are garbage, sometimes the stats are actually quite well, quite good. You know, ev everyone's experience will differ, and 
your played experience will almost always differ from a mathematical solution in a test tube. But that's life, and that's Fire Emblem. And until next time, this is Mithril Zenith signing out.